Welcome, welcome, welcome. I have gone completely traditional with my bullet journal set up for November. If you want to see, come along, see what I did. I'm Viv. Welcome to Art with Viv. And we are first going to start off with a little tour of my October bullet journal spreads. And I did the raven and a skull because, of course, Edgar Allan Poe is one of my favorites. Then I did my content sort of dashboard and then my weekly spreads. I kept them pretty simple with just like a picture at the top and then the, the days of the week. Not a lot of complication, really. And so I really enjoy doing all of that in gouache with just a little bit of marker. So I'm going to continue with the gouache and I went completely sort of traditional for Thanksgiving with the turkey, the pumpkins, the fall leaves, and I really enjoyed doing that. I really, really like this turkey that I did. Um, I, of course, am continuing with the gouache because I'm trying to slowly teach myself how to use gouache. Here I am using a water, water watercolor technique. Come on, Viv, you can talk. And I am going light. I'm painting in the light colors that I see in the turkey's feathers first. I'm going to let that dry and then come back with the darker. It's the opposite way of how gouache really works. You really should do the dark first and come back with the light. But for some reason, I am just sticking with this. Hopefully, eventually, I will train myself out of it. It's not really hurting anything. It's just making me do extra steps, extra work that I don't really need to do with the gouache, but we'll get there. So I'm going ahead painting my pumpkins. I did a yellow wash over the whole pumpkin first, and then I'm just coming back in with some oranges, some actual some reds for the deeper parts, mixing a little bit of white gouache with the yellow and the orange for the highlights. Nothing really fancy, no fancy techniques. I'm just blending it as I go. I decided I needed a sort of a blue gray pumpkin went ahead and mixed that up that is the one thing I do like about gouache you can mix the colors I am gonna tell you though if you use gouache use it out of the tube as much as you can don't let it dry on your palette because you'll never get that creamy consistency that you'll get straight out of the tube once it's dry on your palette it's more like watercolor where you it's thinner it's not as creamy so that's just a little tip for you. The problem is, is I usually squirt out too much and I just go ahead and let it dry on my palette and I just use it the best that I can and it still works out. So I've also added just some, some shading to my blue pumpkin, went ahead and put some more orange on that third pumpkin. Now my mushrooms, I think a nice purple highlight would look good. So I went ahead and did purple over there, just coming back and adding a little bit of shadowing to the other pumpkin now i've painted in some more of the turkey and i'm just moving along with this gouache the one thing about gouache is it dry it does dry faster than watercolor it seems like to me so i'm it, it, it just seems like i can work a little bit faster in some ways but i don't know i don't know if that's just me or if that's actually what's going on <laughs> Just my perception of it or not. So I went ahead and blocked in some colors that I wanted for my turkey. My turkey is actually black and brown, but I don't want him to be a plain black and brown. And when the sunlight hits turkey feathers, you can see greens and golds and purples and nice sort of aqua blues, different colors. So I went ahead and blocked some colors some of those colors in and then I'm just going to come back and paint over it with the darker paint and let those colors peek through to give it sort of a highlight look again gouache is so much easier because if you make a mistake you can just paint over it whereas watercolor not so much the one thing you do have to watch out with this gouache is it will reactivate if you wet it again it will the paint underneath will become liquid again and it'll mix with the paint that you are putting on top of it. So you do have to be really careful about what paint colors you are layering on top of each other so you don't get a muddy look. Um, I learned that the hard way, but I'm getting there. I'm learning. 
I also just mix some of the white into some of these colors to make the highlights. Coming back and mixing in, it's not actually black. I'm sort of mixing all the colors together to get a black. You can use black straight out of the tube. It will look a little flat, just like watercolor, but that's okay. I mean, that's just, this is not meant to be, a, you know, a, a work of art. This is just a good, nice design for my bullet journal. If you're interested in getting a downloadable outline of this design for your own bullet journal, then you might want to consider joining my Patreon. I just started it and it's only $5 a month. It is a great value and you'll get all kinds of extra content related to my YouTube channel like color and pages, downloadable outline drawings, downloadable high res uh, images of some of my artwork that you can put in your bullet journal yourself, my planner pages and layouts. They can be downloaded. I'll get that for you and some extra tutorials and some other fun stuff so you might want to check that out five dollars a month patreon i'll leave the link below in case you are it's a great way to support my channel and help me continue making this content so as you can see i am covering my turkey now with some of that dark mixture and i usually use make my blacks with a brown a really dark brown like a burnt umber in a really dark blue like an indigo that's my favorite combination but you can make it with really any brown and blue or any complementary color mix that you'd like it'll make a nice black for you so that's what i've used and you can see in some of the spots i've got a little bit more blue in the mixture so the mixture doesn't exactly look black it looks a little bit more blue and that's okay because that's what i want with my turkey i want some different blues and purples and golds to shine through so that it looks like the sun is just shining off of his feathers so i'm just continuing working section by section layering that gouache over you know more colors over top of each color but letting some of those just peek right through i've also painted a little bit more of the wreath that's going around him and I'm just really enjoying this. I really, I don't know why, but I just went completely traditional. I didn't, I saw a lot of cute November spreads that had like, you know, coffee and sweaters. That was their theme, kind of cozy. And I really enjoyed those, but it just wasn't me. I am more of a traditional holiday girl. I love all those traditional things. I love like, you know, the vintage art and stuff like that so i was like i'm just gonna go completely traditional and see how it goes and so far i'm really enjoying this theme now i have went and mixed i'm just kind of trying to guide you through what i'm doing without you know making it into a boring tutorial so once i get some of those darker and mid tones in now I'm doing the gouache how it's supposed to be done and I am coming back in mixing some white with each one of those colors like with a little bit of the blue a little bit of the purple and I'm just coming back and hitting some of those feathers with that really pale color to give it the highlights and it also gives it a little bit of a three-dimensional look as well which is you know that's pretty good you want your turkey not to look flat you want him to look like he has some breasts and some chest and you know all of the muscles and stuff that they have so it's good to make them look you know rounded and not just flat on the page now he's got his wings have this interesting sort of almost checkerboard design on them and I'm just using my my dark mixture. My, I'm calling it black. It's not really black, but my black mixture just to paint those little checkerboard sort of little lines all down his each wing feather. And it almost looks like a checkerboard, not quite. And then he's got some black lines that go on each of his tail feathers. They're sort of, they're tipped at the very tip with a creamy white but after that creamy white is a black stripe. And then you've got the brown and black stripes. And then you've got another row of feathers that have a creamy, sort of a creamy outer edge 
and then a little black rim that's what we're doing now and then it also has the alternating brown and black stripes so we are almost finishing with our turkey well we still got a little ways to go but we've got the, the meat of him in there now we're just doing these tail feathers and it is so funny to me that was it who was it that wanted was it Benjamin Franklin I'm, I'm probably wrong but it was one of those fellows one of those founding fathers that wanted the turkey to be our national bird and you know when you look at these turkeys like this when they're in their full splendor and they're the sunlight shine on them they are really actually beautiful animals beautiful birds and I can kind of see why he would go go with that why he would think that but I am so thankful that the eagle is our national bird and not the turkey turkeys are not the they might be pretty at least the males are when they're all fluffed up and trying to flirt but they're not the smart they're not the smartest birds on the planet but they are pretty so and they are very tasty now I'm just getting that tail finished I'm just putting in those stripes I'm starting with the brown stripes and then I'm gonna come back and apply the black stripes in between the brown stripes and I'm also letting just a tiny bit of that really pale golden brown color I have painted on there I'm letting a little bit of that shine through I think it's really pretty and now I'm coming in with my blacks and my dark and my black to go right up against that brown and notice that I'm not making those lines straight they're sort of curvy they actually have a pattern to them if you look if you know I had the reference photo where you could see it but I'm not doing all that I'm just making some lines I'm not going with the pattern because this turkey is too small to get into all that detail I just want to give a hint of it and let your eyes do the rest of the work I'm just not that ambitious people I just I'm not <laughs> but you know I still got a good looking turkey I don't have to copy every single thing exactly as I see it on the reference to get a beautiful painting and neither do you so don't put all that pressure on yourself trying to be a, a scanner or copy machine just just do it the way that your instinct tells you your instincts trust them if you have some artistic instincts trust them because they won't lead you wrong and if they do it's just paper and paint just start all over that's all it's, it's no big deal my whole point is don't try to copy it exactly you'll drive yourself crazy you'll put undue stress and then after a while art won't be fun so put your own flair to it you know give it your own little something something no don't stick to the basics don't stick to the plan sometimes you gotta deviate a little bit so now I'm doing some of those leaves and I'm adding color and then while that sort of like with my watercolor while it's still wet on the paper I'm adding new colors to it the difference is watercolor will mix with each other readily it is a mixing and mingling kind of medium if watercolor if one color gets next to another color and they're both wet and they touch they are just going to have a little happy party together whereas gouache you just kind of got they're a little shyer they they're a little more introverted and you have to kind of use your brush and sort of tease them into you know co-mingling with each other but they still will blend on the paper while they're wet as long as you use your brush to kind of encourage it whereas watercolor you just drop it on that wet paper and they will find each other they are the biggest extroverts on the on the water media spectrum they always looking to mix and mingle whereas gouache you got to encourage them it's a little more introverted so with those purple mushrooms brown is a really nice 
complement color, almost complement, not quite, but almost complementary color. But it looks really good with that purple. So I made, I put a little bit of brown and used brown as the shadows and as the texture to the mushroom caps. And then again, in the leaves, I'm just putting the wet color down and then coming with my brush, adding a new color and just sort of encouraging the mixing with the tip of my brush, getting those colors to mix and mingle. I also added a few acorns and I layered green, a really pale green, and then put brown on top of that for my acorns. And I have decided that I have got entirely too much orange and red in here. So I've got my largest part of my wreath painted. So I'm just gonna come back in here with some blue greens, some lime greens, and kind of tuck it in and fill in all these gaps and areas in between all of this warm red. It, that's a lot of red and yellow I've got in there. So I'm gonna add some cooler greens, some blue greens, tuck them in, tuck those like into all the little spaces and that will cool that down some give your eye a place to rest as you're going you know as your eyes traveling through through the composition and um and it also makes it pop a little bit because orange and blue red and green complementary colors those are complementary color pairs and they always make each other sort of pop when you put them next to each other so i'm really happy with this i love that now we're just gonna let this turkey dry and i'm gonna show you how i did the november i just cut out some scrapbook paper did an edge on it and then just glued it in once i wrote the november with marker that was all there was to that and then I started on my monthly page, my monthly spread, and I did three of the days of the week on one page and four of the days of the week on the other page. I just put the um, November up at the top, NOV, because it was a lot easier. And this one was just a really simple spread. There wasn't a lot to it. And I just um, added a little bit of decoration in the bottom. I used my markers to mark in the November, and I was just using the yellows and the browns, just, you know, to stick with the same turkey color theme. And then the blue, because I had the blue by the November word. And so I just put in the blues. I've got mm, a habit tracker on here, the focus notes for the month, and then a little decoration using gouache down in the corner along with that same theme that we did from the cover page just without the turkey and there's nothing new i did the yellow with the orange with the reds with the pumpkins the blue same exact techniques and just blended it straight on the paper and then in some of those areas where it was a little bare i tucked in a few green foliages or little green leaves whatever little shapes and I also did a little vine and that was it for pretty much it for the November calendar spread. So I'm just going to continue putting in, tucking in a few little leaves here and there. And then we're going to move on to my content spread where I plan all of my monthly content. And all that is is a, two sheets of scrapbook paper. I'm going to tape those in, but just in half of the page and then I'll have two tip ins on either side and that way I can plan all of my monthly content right here and have plenty of room and then all I do is boom there we go and that's just some washi tape gel pen and scrapbook paper to decorate and there's plenty of room for everything to be planned for the month after that we're going to go to the weekly spread and there we go I didn't want to have to go through it's the same thing that we did with the wreath and let's go through a tour now i've shown you all of my um, layouts this is my cover page and then my monthly spread where i'll plan the whole month overview and it also has my little habit tracker and notes 
Then my monthly content planning, which is a really big spread because there's lots of content to plan and I need plenty of room to plan that out. And I have two other spreads that I didn't show you. They're gifts for December and then my menu for Thanksgiving. Then my weekly spread. And that's how all of my weekly spreads are going to look with different designs, of course, but it's going to be the same layout. So I hope you enjoyed this. Look into my Patreon if you are interested in getting a outline drawing of this or a high res print that you can put in your own bujo, your bullet journal, and I will see you soon. Hit the like, share it with a friend, and subscribe.